mỗi lần mình đến showroom của thắng audio đây có lẽ mỗi lần mình phải ngạc nhiên và trầm trồ về chất lượng âm thanh một trong những phần nghe hay nhất tại việt nam luôn nha và mỗi lần mình đến thì chúng mình phải trầm trồ hơn một lần nữa là mỗi khi mà magico đánh cùng với solution thực sự nghe chiều sâu và nhạc tính rất tuyệt vời luôn và nó là ước mơ của rất nhiều người audio file em nghĩ của việt nam và cả quốc tế luôn thì liệu anh có thể anh tùng có thể giới thiệu thêm về solution được không ạ thực ra mình mình gặp Shirin ở Hà Nội năm 2009 lúc bấy mình chỉ biết là cái Solution rất nổi tiếng và hay chơi với Magico nhưng mà lúc bấy giờ thực tế là nói ra thì nó hơi buồn cười nhưng mà mình chưa thể làm đại lý được lý do lúc bấy giờ thị trường nó lên bao hàng trăm nghìn đô là không ai mua không ai nghĩ đến luôn chính vì thế mà lúc đó thì mình chỉ nói với lại Shirin là mình thích cái thương hiệu này quá và xin được xếp hàng làm distributor ngay từ bây giờ mặc dù chưa mua bán cái gì hết và rất may là Shirin là đồng ý với cái việc đó quan trọng nhất là tức là thích sản phẩm và hôm đó thì mình về mình chỉ có một cái ngạc nhiên là Shirin nói mình là cái series 711 chính là series này là chuẩn bị ra và nó hay hơn cái 710 rất nhiều và trong đó mình rất băn khoăn là lúc bây giờ cái 710 nhé là nó chạy nồi cơm điện tức là chạy nguồn analog. Yeah. Nhưng mà tại sao nó nó chạy nguồn switching mà lại còn hay hơn được cả những nguồn analog này? Vì từ xưa nay là cái nguồn mà biến thế này là ăn đậm ở đầu mình rất nhiều rồi. Yeah. Và thực ra bản chất là hồi xưa giờ mình có có tiếp xúc với nguồn dung nhưng mà đúng là toàn loại thật sự là loại 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 ở đẳng cấp thấp, mình chưa hiểu nổi. Và sau đó thì mình mới hiểu rằng một trong những cái thành công của Solution chính là bộ nguồn dung Bộ nguồn dung được chế tạo hết sức đặc biệt và là một cái dự án Dự án tôi cho là rất lớn của Solution Bởi vì nó nó rất nhiều cái chất xám cũng như là à, vấn đề về kỹ thuật cao Thì mới có thể vượt qua được các vấn đề đó Thì quả thật là cái 711 nó hay hơn rất nhiều So với 710 về các phương diện luôn Mặc dù đấy là cái 710 mình nghĩ đó là cái nguồn đa lốc rồi đấy thì Sau này tôi mới tìm hiểu ra thì hóa ra Cái nguồn dung này High level này là Tức là mình chưa biết Còn trên thực tế thì NASA toàn bộ sử dụng nguồn dung yeah. Bảo sau này toàn Bởi vì họ không có cái cái khoang chứa của họ Người ta không thể nào một lúc nào cũng có một cái quả bưởi to như cái nồi cơm ở trong đấy được Và họ lại theo cái Họ phải design theo cái cái kích thước ở trong đấy và solution còn có những cái đặc điểm nữa mà theo tôi cho nghĩ là cái tinh thần làm 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 mạch công suất rất cao cụ thể là những cái thanh dẫn ở trong đấy bọn tôi đã quan sát rất kỹ rồi hoàn toàn bằng đồng thanh và rất to lớn hơn bình thường bản thân như những cái cọc ra loa của solution thì chúng tôi là dân kỹ thuật mà bao giờ cũng tò mò mở xem thì bao giờ nó làm với cái tinh thần tức là nó là vẫn là đồng thanh nối và bản chất của hai em các bạn chú ý là cái tiếp xúc là rất quan trọng thì từ cái âm ly ba ba mươi nhiều lúc tôi rất là buồn cười bởi vì tôi nhìn lại cái design là sau khi sò ra công suất về cái chân sò chân công suất ra họ dùng những cái kết nối và những cái vít rất nhỏ li ti và ra những cái đồng thanh ra đến tận binning bot tức là ra cổng loa thế còn bảy một một với bảy linh một thì thôi khỏi phải nói rồi Tôi nói là cái điều này rất quan trọng nhưng bởi vì rất nhiều hãng Amli mà tôi thấy thương mại tôi mở ra là coi như là dây nối từ từ mạch công suất ra. Hiện đại nếu mà nói ra thì có lẽ chỉ có một vài thương hiệu mà tôi nhìn thấy chính là Mark Levinson với lại Solution làm điều đó. Tức là họ lấy làm sao mà cái kết cấu ra của người ta là rất logic và rất chắc chắn từ cái 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 cọc sò ra mà ra đến điểm loa. Là cái tinh thần họ làm rất cao. Đấy. Thì Uh, đấy là những cái gì mà tôi nói hết về cái 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 kỹ thuật của Solution yeah. Và nói thiệt là em đến với Thắng Audio hay đến những cái đợt hai end show mà đánh Magico cùng với Solution Lúc này cũng thấy được cái chuyện đó là nghe đồ thực sự nó có cảm giác nó chính xác Thực sự rất chính xác nhưng mà cái chiều sâu và cái độ nhạc tính của nó có lẽ là không có một dạng nào có thể tái tạo được Cái combo này thực sự em nghe thật sự đến bây giờ em vẫn phải trầm đồ đợt sau nào cũng vậy và em nghĩ chắc anh không biết anh nghĩ như thế nào về cái combo phôi ghép này đó 
Thực ra thì đầu tiên mình phải cảm ơn Thắng Audio Bởi vì là đây là một cái rất đặc biệt của Việt Nam mình Anh Thắng anh chơi nhạc rất lâu và anh ấy có những cái lựa chọn tuyệt vời Nên Chính vì vậy nó cộng thêm với lại cái việc mà những, những cái gì mà mình đã nói Về những cái đặc điểm mà, mà, mà tức là cái dòng dẫn lớn nhất của Solution Nó dẫn tới một cái là chúng tôi đã đã có được một cái đội hình mà làm cái magical của Suisun này theo tôi nghĩ là tốt nhất có thể. Yeah. Và thật sự là em nghĩ là ai mà đến với showroom của Thắng Rio em đảm bảo chắc cũng thuốc liền nghe quá cũng hút bật. thuốc ngay. Bởi vì chính bản thân mình vừa nghe xong mà <cười> mình với Sirin vừa nghe xong mà cũng rất ngạc nhiên bởi vì là nghe hay quá. Dạ đúng rồi. Nghe hay quá. Nghe hay quá. Ừ. Dạ vâng ạ. Thì cũng mình cũng mời mọi người có thể đến 260 phố Huế để trực tiếp trải nghiệm magical cùng với Solution nha. Hello everyone, so today we are here at Tang Audio Showroom, probably the best showroom in Vietnam in terms of sound quality. And as you see here, there's Solution, there's Tape Head, and there's Magical as well. Today we have very special guest with us, Mr. Cyril Hammer from Solution. And today we will talk a little bit about Solution itself and also the new products that Solution bring to High End Munich and a lot other malls. You will learn about this video. So first, Mr. Sir Hammer, thank you for doing the interview with us. One thing that always strikes me very interesting is Solution probably is the pioneer in ultra high-end audios in terms of the two sections. One is the switch mode power supply mm -hmm. in the product itself. And the secondly, there is also the ultra-wide bandwidth amplification. When people talk about switch mode power supply, they talk about that noise. Because most people think that switch mode power supply, they have a switching frequency. And sometimes the switch mode, that the frequency can affect the audio frequency we can hear. And also, most people in the audio file industry think that, okay, switch mode power supply is equal, is equal bad and cheap and everything like that. But when you look into the solution product, it's not cheap. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think that switch mode power supply brings much cleaner and better DC compared to traditional Toroido that often appear on high-end unit? Well, f first step to, to your question is maybe there is, there is a reason why uh, switch mode power supplies have a bad reputation in high-end audio because that's, I mean, it's not the first unit or the first product in, high, in, in audio which uses switch mode power supplies. It has been introduced way back um, in other products, maybe lower quality, low price products where it has been implemented mainly to, re to reduce cost and space requirements in those units. And if you go for these design uh, goals, then of course you, you compromise in some areas. And this has happened in those, in those products in the past. So that's where the bad repu uh, reputation comes from for switch mode power supplies, because it was a different design purpose or goal than what we did follow here in the 711 or the, the solution um, amplification SMPSs. If you go for the, the switch mode power supply, or let's say the, the challenge of a power supply in such is that it has to provide clean DC power to the amplifier stages and as clean as possible. That's one thing, so it should be noise free. And the second point is it should be perfectly stable, which means whenever the amplifier is asking for current, the output voltage should remain should remain stable not change yeah. at all now if you look into the technology of the toroidal uh, transform um, so-called so linear power supplies with toroidal transformers and, and the uh, the um, EI the IO and, and so on yeah, yeah. these um, power supplies usually are not regulated this means they they do the um, the D they generate the DC and they have uh, filter stages with capacitors but there is, in general, there is no regulation stage which keeps the voltage perfectly stable. Which means that whenever the amplifier is asking for current, the voltage will slightly drop. The better you design the, the, the linear power supply, the more stable this, this will stay, of course. Um, but it, it cannot remain perfectly stable. In a switch mode power supply, this is very different to begin with because a switch mode power supply is always regulated, always, which means that this, the output 
uh, the output voltage of a switch mode power supply is always kept stable as much as possible. It's not perfect. I mean, there's nothing like perf <laughs> perfect <laughs> uh, source in the world that does not exist, but it, it gets very close to that. So to start with, it's just the better voltage source than the linear, than a linear power supply in general. Then the next point is the switching, which, which is associated with generating noise and maybe folding back into the audio band. If you use switch mode power supplies, there is of course a, a wide variety of, of uh, options you can, yeah. you can use. Also where you put that switching frequency. So the switch mode power supplies in the 711, for instance, they switch at around 70 kilohertz, which is already outside the audio band. <coughs> And all the, the the harmonic noise which is generated is well above that, yes. and it does not fall back into the uh, to the audio band. Um, in in this case, so that's to filter this high frequency noise is a rather simple job on the uh, on a, um, on a switch mode power supply. But if you look now in a in a linear power supply, the rectifiers in there which is also some sort of a switching device, not yes. so, some sort of, it is a switching <laughs> device, uh, a rectifier, which is switching at 50 or 60 hertz, depending on the mains frequency, Focusing. and then producing all the harmonics. After that, and yeah. After that, yeah. which reaches well across all the audio band. It's, let's, let's be, be open, <laughs> it's terrible, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's a terrible task or a, a very challenging task, actually, not terrible, a challenging task to reduce that noise to, to acceptable levels, that's possible. You can do that in a linear power supply, but it's a lot of effort, right? So the switch mode power supply has a lot of advantages uh, to that. Solution produce a lot of products from source, from uh, power hungry models like this. And we will talk about that. We will have a lot of different rail and voltage operation as well. So from 3.3, 5 volt, 12 volt. I mean, especially something like a power amp like 711 like this, will draw a lot of currents from the power supply. So how can solution design that power supply stage that can also cleanest, provide the cleanest DC, also very power hungry, high current output like that? So it's the the advantage here is that we have a, a again a switch mode power supply which is stable to start with on the on the rails right yes. which is where the the power for these speakers actually is coming from in this model we use um still big um capacitors for energy storage so just to have a lot of a lot of energy stored in capacitors to dissipate immediately where we can output up to close to 100 amperes uh, on a on a on an impulse which is, I think, enough to <laughs> to control most yeah. of the speakers in the world. So, so that's uh, that's the, uh, the advantage here. Yeah, and let's talk all about the next topic, especially when the solution not only known for their high-end switch mode power supply, but also like very high bandwidth, ultra wide bandwidth yes. frequency amplification, from zero hertz to two megahertz or something like that. And when we talk about High frequency. Most people only know Harris audio. They are stem on it, 96 kilohertz. And when you talk about megahertz last solution, I think there's nothing on in the world right now from digital side and outside can reproduce that frequency. And so why the solution choose that philosophy, and yeah. also how can you achieve that? Okay. Well, if you if you look into the uh, let's say frequency content of high high res audio. You would you could say well maybe let's limit it to 200 kilohertz. That's the max you could expect to come from a source. Um, do we hear a frequency at 200 kilohertz? No, at least I do not. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah, <laughs> some animal do. <laughs> maybe some some animal can. Yeah. So let's put it like a, what what is audible uh, to most of the people is something in the range up to max 20 kilohertz. So the question is, why would you have to amplify up until two megahertz? Makes no no sense, right? In the first yeah. first um, for the first side. Um, of course, we do not do that because of we th because we think we hear any frequencies or any noise uh, any any notes up there. Um, we did actually learn over time that one of the most critical or most important design. Um, parameters for an amplifier or preamplifier is its phase response. 
So the phase should not change. Let's say, put it simple, the phase should not change at all from zero to 20 kilohertz in the audio band where we can listen. Because if, if the phase changes, you could actually, uh, as an analogy, say it's as if you would um, offset the speaker, the, the tweeter of the speaker by five centimeters to the back yeah. or to the front, which you, nobody would do, right? But yeah. in, in a, a phase change in, the, in an audio signal does some sort of do a similar thing. You don't want to have that. So we say, okay, if we don't want to have that, it should not happen in the, in the solution amplifier or preamplifier. And the easiest, the most simple um, thing you can do is just to put the transmission frequency up to a very high frequency. Two megahertz, for instance, or in a 725 or the new 717 power amplifier, or even 20 megahertz for the new yeah. 727 preamplifier. So that's the easiest thing you can do, just enlarge the bandwidth and then the phase change will be close gets, to zero. It's close to zero in the yeah. audio band. And that's it, right? That's yeah. the reason. So when most audiophiles talk about the switchable power supply, they think about class D. Mm -hmm. Automatically think that, okay, switchable power supply and then class D amplification later. But also in any of solution products, they always linear amplification, either class A or class AB. So can you further explain to us why is the design? Well, it's, a, it's always class AB in the solution power amplifiers. And the, I mean, of course, you, you could think of, and we did think of uh, doing class D stage and did decide to not do it for uh, very distinct reasons. It's, we do not say class D is bad, but um, I would say with today's technologies, class D is just not, um, you cannot switch fast enough with today's um, devices to achieve a two or, or megahertz bandwidth, which we would need for that yeah. linear uh, phase response. Um, and we would have to have switch, uh, switch, switching devices which are really, really fast switching, like in the hundreds of megahertzes, which would then produce, of course, a lot of noise, EM, uh, RF EMI, noise, which yeah. you have to EMI to, to control with that. And yeah, it's just, and to control that while providing a lot of current to a speaker like, a, like a, what you're listening here, which easily can ask for 10, 20, 30 amperes, yeah. this filter device would get extremely big and yeah. difficult to design. So we thought, okay, or we decided it's easier to have a switch mode power supply, which makes the, the perfect um, supply condition, and then use a linear class AB stage, which is, does not require this kind of heavy filtering later on. So let's go to the details, especially for the new products. Um, you introduced in high Munich, mm -hmm. the new 7 series and also the new 3 series. There's was one thing that's always, always made me very interested. I wonder why solution goes to such lengths, especially for the volume control for the pre-amplification stage. So for digital side, you had the lead volume mm -hmm. control, digital very high ends. And when, but when you talk about that solution like a pre-amplifier, you have two stage of uh, volume control. The normal ones is the relay resistor ladder volume control. And the second one is like digital side thing of yes. amp control and everything like that. When most ultra high end other brands, they use like only one. So why solution goes much further compared to others? Well, it's mainly related to, let's say, uh, comfort uh, while changing volume. If you, the, so, the high quality volume control is a resistor ladder which is switched by relays. And the way we have designed that, you would actually get clicks on pops um, in, the, in the speaker when you change volume while just using just the uh, resistor ladder with the relays. So we said we don't want to have that, that's not nice, so it, you should have to feel like uh, using a potentiometer. Yes, so smooth. Uh, so that's smooth. <laughs> so yeah. we use a second volume control, which is a IC based volume control, which is can actually change the volume without any clicks and pops. But this second volume control is not of the same uh, ultra high end quality as the resistor ladder. So it is only active while you change the volume. So I see. as soon as you touch the volume, we switch from the resistor ladder to the IC volume control, which is on the same level. Then we move, change the 
the volume to the new, the, the, the new level. Once you set the new level, we adjust the relay to the same level, and switch back. Let's talk about that a product, a preamplification that have its names make me wonder why. So the, it's the new 757, the DFS preamplifier. Yes. So I think it, as the all-in-one for analog lover, you have everything inside of it. But I wonder why is it called the the Ephesus preamplifier and what is the difference between that and the 727? So yeah, when we started the project, the 757, it was intended to be a phono stage, right? Yeah. That's the obvious, the, or phono preamplifier, that was the obvious name for it. So while working on that, we did see, we wanted to have in that new phono stage or phono amp as well, uh, the emphasis for not just for RIA, for DECA, for London, for alternative um, uh, curves. And while working on that, we have seen, okay, an interesting uh, technology which comes up is as well the cartridge from DS Audio, the optical cartridge. We managed to integrate that as well, which asks for a complete different um, way on how yeah. to do the, uh, the emphasis for all those curves. Then at the same time, we see, have seen uh, that there's some requests for tape um, ri with rising interest on that. So having something like the emphasis circuit, which does RIA and all the others, tape is not that far from that. So is yeah. it okay, why, why don't we add this as well? So the challenge for that product was to design a circuit which is configurable yeah. and does all those different kinds of <laughs> the emphasis. So yeah. we said, okay, why don't we call it just the emphasis preamplifier so it covers all of it and not just the phono, right? Yeah, and just you just need one preamplifier yes. and a power amp like this, and you have a high, very ultra high setup. Yes, yes. Yeah. So let's talk about the, I think the most anticipated products of the year from Solution is the new 717, yes. the new power amp from the high end Munich, and also. I see last week also the upgradable with the new 711 and 701. What is the new inside the new amplifier and also what is the best special about the 717? Yeah, maybe we start with the 717 and then we go yeah. to the plus upgrade. Yeah. So this, the 717 is a is a new design from scratch. So we did not we did not say let's say it's not an evolution from the 717 or an upgrade and it's something completely new. Uh, we ask ourselves again, knowing that kind of face response is, is important, how can we optimize that for a power amplifier? In a power amplifier, you always have some limitations in terms of what is the maximum output bandwidth you can generate because you have to, to add gain. So th the challenge was to have from one megahertz, can we, can we do more? Yeah. So we did achieve two megahertz for the 717, but this was not possible with the same topology of amplification than we use in the 711. That's where it's something completely new from scratch. Yeah, so let's talk about the plus model upgrade. Yeah, yeah so it's in, in the plus module, we have we actually used some ideas of what we have realized in the 717. Of course, we cannot go all the way because that's a model which yeah. is in place like that. But there are some technologies we use in the new 717, like an ultra-linear negative feedback network, which goes into that uh, PLOS uh, mod, uh, model in the 711 and 701. And in fact, what it changes, of course, the, the sound, um, yeah. and it changes the sound into the direction of what the 717 will provide as well, but just a step, a step that, right? It's yeah, not, a step. It, cannot, it cannot do all the way, but it's a step into the same direction. So let's talk about the new 3 Series because most people in Vietnam know the solution from the Ultra High and 7 Series but obviously not everyone can achieve that, not everyone can go out and buy the 7. But the new 3 Series bring up a very interesting point, new technology from the same from the 5 Series, aesthetic design, everything. So can you share a little bit of uh, information that why should user, especially high-end user, should consider, should consider the new 3 Series? Especially when you compare the price, you compare the technology, it's on par with other brand flagship. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, three, the new 3 Series actually does also profit to some extent from the new technology of the new 717 um, power, uh, power amplifier. 
Um, not in the negative feedback, that really is, is the same, but in the, the 717 does use a new switch mode power supply, yeah. which is still a 600 VA per module, which is four in a, as a 2400 in a, in a 717, but it can output 3.5 times the nominal uh, power for five seconds. Okay, so and that's the same, we use the same type of switch mode power supply in the three series, not as powerful, it's just a 300 VA, um, or 300 watts per module, also four modules, which is 1,200 to start yeah. with, yeah. but it goes 3.5 times, so more than 4,000 watt for five seconds, yeah. which is a massive, huge power supply for this tiny little box of a of a integrated amplifier. So that's uh, what, what gets, which is a, a big difference to the um, to the three series. As well, apart from that, we also did improve the, in, the the bandwidth of internal stages in the preamp in the formal card for instance um, to have wider bandwidth than they had before the yeah. overall bandwidth of this of the product did not change it's still was 800 kilohertz some uh, something but internal stages did uh, have been improved to 2 megahertz or 20 megahertz which overall reduces the phase, the phase. change yeah. um, of the product slightly, which is but well, well audible. Uh, và cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi video nha. Và mình cũng xin phép cảm ơn Thanh Tùng và Thắng Audio đã tạo cơ hội cho mình để có thể thực hiện cái buổi phỏng vấn và trò chuyện trải nghiệm về sản phẩm Co Solution này.